All right, so let's talk about tables in APA style. This is based on the seventh edition of APA style. Um, when they come out with an eighth, they'll change some things, and that's just the way it's going to be. But for now, when you look at an APA style table, it has some specific requirements that you need to keep in mind and bear in mind. First, is that you have to have your tables numbered and that numbering has to come above the table it's got to be left aligned and it has to be in bold okay so here table one then table two then table three and so on on the next line you need a title for said table okay it needs to be in italics and it needs to be simple and descriptive mean and standard deviation for variables one and two okay then when we get to the actual table itself one thing to note is there are no vertical borders throughout the entire table okay uh, you're not allowed to use them at all moreover when it comes to horizontal borders you're only allowed to use the minimum number of borders Okay, necessary to convey the information. So in this table, we have the mean and standard deviation for variables one and two. Okay, our first column, we're letting our reader know what statistic will be covered in each row. And then across the header row on the top, we're letting them know what they can find in each column. So the statistic that we're looking, gonna look for in each row in the first column, what it is for variable one, and then what it is for variable two. Then, underneath all that, there is our note. This essentially equates to a caption. Um, the word note has to be in italics, followed by a period. And then you describe any sort of symbols that you use to convey important information, or if you um, use an abbreviation, technically any non-standard abbreviation, what they constitute. Now, I did it for our standard abbreviations here just because we needed something in the note. So M equals mean, SD equals standard deviation, should probably keep it consistent with the degree of spacing, so on and so forth, okay? Now, this is the basic format for a table, and I'm gonna show you some other tables from published reports that, that follow this general theme, okay? So, here is a paper published in 2023 by Bush et al., the reliability of an adaptive marijuana purchase test. So this is a paper that's going over some method that they developed, okay? And it's this behavioral economic component with indices. But that information is not too important for our purposes. We want to scroll down and we want to look at one of their tables. This is a journal. Uh, this is a publication that's APA. It has to follow APA style. So here we are, table two, and we can see that it follows that same basic format. So table two. It's bolded, it's italicized. Part of the reason you have to have this and it's gotta jump out is so that when they, as they do over here, come over here and be like, hey, go look at table two for more information. You can find table two quickly and easily. Then there's the title. Now in this case, the title's a mouthful because they're actually going over some, essentially, um, output from some nonlinear regression analysis. So it's, there's a lot of density here. But what they have here in all reality is kind of simple and matter of fact correlations between the original and the adaptive no responsibility MPT indices with baseline no responsibility MPT indices. So what's the correlation between the original test and our adaptive test with these two different versions? Okay, And what you can see is that in this first column, similar to what I did, they have demand index, which a demand index is really just the type of statistic that's coming out of their analysis. So this would be essentially equivalent to saying statistic. And then what statistic is in each row below that breakpoint, P max, O max, intensity, elasticity. And then they have their different versions, the original, the adaptive, and then the permutation test P value. Then they have their note where they're explaining what MPT is. And if you notice in the table, they have asterisks. And they're now telling you what those asterisks mean at that point in the table. So it's still following the same format that I just showed you. Um, here's another APA paper. This is Dwyer et al. out of Warren Bickel's group at Virginia Tech. In this case, again, it's another methodological paper, um, but that's okay for us. 
Okay, so let's scroll down and find one of their tables. These tables are a little bit bigger in scale. And when I say a little bit, I, I'm sort of a grossly under um, stating things. So here's their table one. But you can see it still follows the same format. Table one at the top in bold, sample characteristics, the title of the table, italics. Then they have their header row, which tells you what you'll find in each column. This is the particular characteristic. Then it's, OK, what about the total? What about the high quality, the low quality, and the requisite p-values that go along with those things? Okay, And so it's still following that same format. There's a lot more information, and this really highlights the value of tables. You can communicate a lot of information very densely and efficiently. Okay, And then at the bottom, just like the other one, Here's the note, italics with a period. They're defining their non-standard abbreviation, GED, General Education Development. Um, then there's all the symbols. So they use superscript A's and superscript B's and C's and D's to mean different things. And there they're actually indicating, hey, this is what we're talking about when we have this little superscript D right here. So you say, oh, this is the D, Alcohol Use Disorders Identification Test, or audit score. Okay. Now, these publications and these papers are in APA journals, excuse me, okay? However, this format of table looks very professional, it looks very clean, and it is followed by other publications. So this is a paper of mine. It's in Alcoholism Clinical and Experimental Research. It's not an APA journal. I'm not required to follow APA style for this journal, okay? But yet, as we scroll down, you can see, hey, Here's my table one where I talk about the training methods I use in my operant task. Hey, it still has no vertical borders. There is still table one in bold. There's still a separate title. It's formatted slightly differently to match this journal style, but that's okay. And then at the bottom, all my abbreviations are defined. So even though this isn't an APA publication, it's actually really close to APA style nonetheless, okay? So this all is great. We have these APA style tables. Uh, how do you make one? Because it's kind of difficult sometimes, and this tends to be a sticking point. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's say we were making another table where we needed um, different statistics reported for different variables. So let's go ahead and let's make sure we have bold selected, and we'll have table two. Okay. Hit enter. Now for our title, we won't want it bold, but we will want to italicize. So let's again pick something. Let's say we're doing it for variables three and four. So mean and standard deviation for variables three and four. Okay. Then we can go about, go to insert up here at the top. Then we're going to need a table. Now, I know that I'm going to report the mean and standard deviation and have a header row for that. So that's three rows right there and a header column. And then I'm going to have two variables, so I'll need two more additional columns. So a three by three table. Okay. Now, I have found it's easiest to create at this point, fill in all the table, and then deal with the borders last. So we we're going to want our statistic here. Oop, and this should not be italicized at all. We want this just regular font, okay, statistics, and then we'll go mean, and then we'll go SD, and then we'll have variable three, and we will spell variable correctly, and then variable four, okay? And we'll plug in some bogus values here. G -g 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 -g. So we plugged in some values there. Now, this is the point where it's easy to deal with the borders because there's text representing where each cell would be. Now, I found it's easiest to select the whole table. I do it by clicking this little arrow crossbar thing right here. Then it's table design, borders, and then I select no border to remove it all. Then I select my top row. I want a top border to signal the end of the table and a bottom border to signal the end of the header row. Then I select the bottom row in the table, and I select a bottom border to signal the end of the table. Then I click below it, and I need it italicized for the note, which fortunately it already is in this case. Note, period, space, remove the italics, 
Now I need to define all my abbreviations. M equals mean. SD equals standard deviation. And there's my table. Now what it looks like for you will vary quite a bit to serve your purpose, but this is sort of the bare bones introduction to it. Um, good luck.